Hello, everybody, and welcome to our weekly conversation in our series on Seeking Harmony. Uh, today's part two, and our topic for today is delving into the purpose of media. So I think one of the things that kind of been highlighted for us as a team in exploring these topics is the prevalence of fake news and also just the energy of being discerning when seeing what is being reported. But also another thing that, um, I th that Jeff shared with us was also, you know, um, just, a, 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 I think it was a Twitter post that said, well, you know, why, why does the media constantly inundate us with so many bad things in the news? It is a whole planet. And so at any given time, there will be something bad happening. And so, yeah, I think let's kick it off from there, just in terms of your sentiment on why we have gotten to the point where we have to be extra discerning about what's actually happening in the news and possibly even ideas of how we can do that. So yeah, I'm just, I feel like maybe we just need to allow the conversation to flow and just see where it takes us. But primarily our purpose is to look at and examine the purpose of media and what we feel it should be contributing to news and society at, at large. So I'm gonna open it up to the team. I know it's and, and it, it's, a, it's quite a big question, but let, let, let's start small and, and start with, in your view, what is or should be the purpose of media? I was thinking exactly about this question the whole day. And when we had dinner, I started to um, uh, remind myself when it started that we have media, kind of to go back to the roots. And what came to my mind were uh, American Indian. They kind of uh, gave themselves uh, information with uh, fire. And it was uh, the purpose of that was, um, we inform you there is something happen, that you know what to do. And then I realized, yeah, it's easy. To, for me, it was easy. The purpose of news is that I, I get information about something that are my, um, that I the thing I know about something is on is always new news that I know what is currently happening and that is for me at I realized it kind of broken down the purpose of uh, media of news that I get to informed about a thing a situation or what else. What came up for me was that media is kind of a two-way street. It can be used for good. It can be used for uh, sometimes bad in the sense of entertainment purposes. And sometimes those entertainment purposes aren't in, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In, aren't in the best place for every individual involved. I think, um, you know, we've, we've come into such a, a global society that media, I think the purpose for me would be to, um, to be aware of what is, 
um, happening um, in a world where um, basically everything that happens really concerns us because like everything that someone does like on the other side of the world can have an impact on on our lives as well because that's how global we are today and um uh yeah for me the pure purpose of media would be to to um give the citizens an, an opportunity to make an informed choice like um you know we have responsibilities and choices to make as human beings and i think media should be um the best like messenger of like what does that choice entail like how is it that we can make that choice like what are your rights like what is um the situation and and how it is portrayed and uh, how does it impact like every one of us so yeah i'd say yeah media have a responsibility to to inform us of our choices and rights for me I feel like it is to get everyone on the same page um, and to inform us of something, whatever that might be, but definitely more focused on like getting us on the same page. Um, you know, like obviously the coronavirus is like a great example, you know, if we weren't, we like, we all needed to be informed of that so that we could all, um, you know, do what we needed to do as far as that. And just like anything that needs reported. Um, yeah, I'd say reported is a good word for that too. Like to report stuff. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I think it is. Um, I think that media is uh, a form of communication because like it gives us the access kind of to just communicate with everybody around the world, like see what's going on in like Russia or, you know, in Florida. I don't know. We're just able to see what's going on rather than just like picking up the phone and, hey, what's up, Russia? What are you doing? Like you could kind of see what's happening. So yeah, for me, I think it's, it's like a form of communication that informs us of everything that's going on. Yeah, I agree with everyone as well. Um, we may probably see it as a form of profit <laughs> in that people see both sides of what is portrayed in the media, but the goal behind it, and well, this is how I feel, <laughs> is a profit of some kind to get people for one thing or another. and. Um, make money, business. Yeah. yeah that's it. Well, that's a good point because when I was like discussing this with Ray, um, I was telling him how I used to watch this show. I have no idea what it's called, but what they would do is they would like go out on the scenes of like whatever was going on and they would get footage and then they would try, they would sell it to the, you know, different media stations in their area. And so like they made a living off of that because if anything happened, they would like show up at the scene and film it and they would sell their tapes. So um, I think that might be where we need to like look at more too because obviously it needs to be more focused on just like information and clarity is uh what i feel okay cool so you guys have touched on quite a few 
components, but I think the primary component that I'm getting through our conversation is information and communication. And so one of the things that I also shared in terms of components of media and the purpose was around information. So, you know, news to inform you, um, also to persuade you of things. So sometimes it, it, it might be reported in one way or another to convince you of a particular stance or to get you to support a particular political party. There's also the sense that media as Kat shared is, is still about a profit at the end of the day. There aren't very many non-profit media organizations. So they're still trying to sell something. And so I, I feel like even in the sense of being informed, something is being sold, something, a viewpoint is being sold, or maybe in terms of entertain, entertainment, uh, a lifestyle is being sold, a service is being sold, a product is being sold. There always seems to be a bit of a profit narrative or imperative behind some of the work. Um, and of course, there's the, the, the other component of in order to persuade you, I need to give you information that strengthens my position, but possibly weakens somebody else's position. Or I need to advance an argument that puts holes in somebody's theory in order to disprove it so that I persuade you to more readily accept my theory. So there's a, there's a lot of the energy of convincing, but there's also an energy of trading of some sort. And so like with those things in mind, does that change your perspective of what you would like media to be? Because we also know you watch, you, you watch certain channels and there's very specific programming targeted to very specific audiences at any given time. So there's also an energy of profiling, which might also feed an energy of bias. So, 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 yeah, you know, I've, I've looked at it from different perspectives just because I feel like we need to touch on it on all of those places because they, they play a role. We don't necessarily understand or know how much of a role they play at any given time, but they are influential in the overall process. So having shared that, if you had a golden wand, what would you want media to be? Because we have a sense that we'd like to be informed, but there's also the entertainment component. There's also the, for lack of a better word, propaganda component. There might also be the component of fake news to create sensationalism. There might even be the creation of sensationalism within current news. So, you know, it, it, it puts a bigger responsibility on the consumer of that media to be aware that there are many more components to what media is right now. And as a team, are we comfortable that media is there? Or as a team, what would we like media to be? For me, I would personally love media to be much more balanced. I'd love media to portray a much more relevant and realistic picture of what is actually happening. And we can't, 
we, we, I suppose we can't dictate all the time, but we can heal in the space where we'd like our reality to shift in that direction. So for me, so for again, I, 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 would, I would love media to be a representative of all the people of the world in whatever form it comes through. Uh, I would love to understand people's cultures in a much more healthy way, as opposed to that opposing frictional view. I would also love media not to plant thoughts because again, sometimes it's a lot of subliminal messaging to persuade us of one thing or another. So it, it, it kind of falls on us to be much more discerning and aware of the things that we consume from what is shared in media, regardless of what form it comes in. Because again, it's print, it's it's print, it's visual, it's oral. Like you you listen to you listen to news, you listen to traffic. Um, there's a there's a lot of things that influence you as a human being in consuming what the media is putting out. So yeah, I love like I, I, you know I, I just want to kind of test with the team. Like, given that, do we feel like media is actually serving its purpose? I'd like to share my opinion of it, um, as because I learned a lot about it, a lot of surprising info about it when I was um, studying political science and social sciences, obviously we had to, we had um, a whole chapter on, on media and journalism. And um, I know it changes depending on um, the country, but like we have media that um, we know for sure are taken side. And so I have uh, an opinionated, um, view of the news and some that seem more neutral but even in these more neutral ones like today we live in a world where there is so much information coming every day that um, journalists um, don't really have the time anymore uh, to to research something truly and so all the big medias have this one paper sheet of information that they all pass around for one news. And so sometimes they don't have the time to, you know, proofread it or to prove it or to do uh, detailed information on it. And I think it participates in, in that, um, you know, TV or media programming of at this hour, we need to make that audience and we need to make our channel, uh, our channel the most viewed, um, pick the interest on pe of people, um, you know, make them look at our media rather than others. And I think um, it's the problem of profit that uh, Catherine was pointing to. And um, for me, I guess if I had a golden one, I'd say I'd let TV programming for the entertainment hours. And I'd want to see the media hours, maybe one or, or two a day for some channels. I, I'd love to see the media hours, um, you know, with uh, news, that focus on what we really need to know um, and maybe subjects that are really interesting for us as um, a society and consciousness instead of news that is made to be sens sensationalized or, you know, breaking news or news that are not verified. And so 
I'd say it would be a time window in the day um, where most media um, do not care about audiences, but care about like information at its core, because I think audience has replaced information for most, most new channel, I say. I do share a little bit of your vision to Granville. I would like to see media a little bit more informative and a little bit less entertainment. Though I feel like for what I've known about the subject that this began to be quite an issue when news uh, had to be like 24 hours. And so at some point it's like, what, like, what do we feed people? And it started to escalate in this competition of getting attention and see who's the most watched uh, program and perhaps the mission of media sort of got diluted uh, over time, in particular with uh, these changes since cable kicked in and such like. I remember a time where the news were just like Yuri was sharing, one, two, maybe three times a day, morning, uh, middle of the day, evening, and that was pretty much it. Uh, but it was interesting as, as you were um, moving the conversation forward because what came up was what we were discussing in our first live last week in regards to um, taking sides. And apparently media has been uh, playing that game very obviously. So um, as you were saying, as consumers of this, we also get a saying. You know, we can shape uh, how we would like media to be. Yeah, kind of like claim that uh, back. It's not only about being discerning, um, it's also being very clear what we desire from this because media should be serving, um, how do you say, like society in general, like um, there is a, a, an English word I cannot, uh, the greater good in my humble opinion. Um, so yeah, of course, there are going to be different points of view. And it would be very interesting to see if it's possible to have a mature conversation about these different points of views, instead of, as you were saying, uh, trying to see how, like, who can bring more water to their dam. And yeah, kind of like a more mature conversation about the things that, are, of course, are going to be happening, because like we are over 5 billion people, of course, stuff are gonna be happening around the world. And as we were speaking at the very beginning, since we are a globalized society that we can make decisions based on an, the most accurate information we can possibly get our hands on. Because now a decision doesn't, it's not like, oh, I'm in my, my little village, a thousand miles away from everyone and whatever I decide, nobody knows like decisions impact each other. And since apparently most of us desire to live in a more peaceful society, it would be very healthy for everyone to find that balance that you were mentioning. Do you? Oh, I thought you were adding to me. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> So I have a question because you know, like one of the one of the key factors here is around information. And in the age of globalization, we and digital media and all those other things, where information is so much more freely available, is that not what has shifted media not? properly filling its purpose in the sense that before the newspapers with the big stories sold more and they sold faster it was all about almost that energy of being first to market and so now with this greater access to information 
isn't and then I think it's something that Jareen touched on. Isn't there isn't there more of an incumbence on them to actually provide factual information, like to actually research it? I, like I know there's there's the energy of competition that I feel like fuels quite a bit of why things probably may go to print faster, may go to their websites faster, where things are not necessarily completely verified. But isn't that maybe part of the challenge that the energy of competition and the prevalence of the availability of information is skewing what we are receiving? I'd like to agree with you, but I think we can already trace back um, media trying to, and newspapers trying to um, take sides with the information, even in the 1800s. And so I wonder if the real thing is not that, um, you know, the core of it is not healed. Like media want, you, want us to, to feel like they, they have a truth, but the way they were um, built does not really reflect that. Or there, there is a pattern then there that is not healed. Um, yeah, it's my feeling on it. I'm not sure like what it could be, but I definitely feel like there's yeah, there's this gap between um, between their responsibility and 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 what has happened with media, even even in the past, like you know, and maybe it's. Um, easier to see now that there is more, um, we have access to information 24 seven, as Deb was saying, instead of a newspaper in the morning or news like three times a day. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Noreen. I'm gonna have to disagree with you, Granville, because uh, I feel that with the access that we have to the information outside of newspapers and news outlets, we've been given more information than we can ever receive that actually helps people. Like for example, if the video of Ahmaud Aubrey was not out, those men who killed him would not be in jail. And that's true. So is the true pattern maybe drama and also a bit of competition instead of um, focusing on the truth? Like, what do you, what do you guys think about um, the patterns we see in media? I like Irene that you brought up drama, as we. As we see also in movies that <laughs> drama sell, and um, when media kind of hop on this join, they um, push it and push it and push it to a limit that is not healthy anymore. And that is you're in talking about something feels here off and something feels here not good. It's a pain in the consciousness of uh, media because it is a uh, it was abused in the past. And so to overcompensate this pain of abuse, uh, it has to get um, uh, attentional and that we can uh, uh, overcompensate this pain. Media makes more um, drama out of everything instead of uh, being like, um, 
uh, have this balance. That's the information. And we take responsibility to give you the best information at the fastest time possible. And not when it's now important to give this information, it's important that we receive this information now. And as we have these new social medias, it's, that is possible. But we do not need to feed it always, constantly. It's safe to, when there is nothing happen, that we don't um, bring something just because to feed it. There's always something happening. Either it's a good thing or a bad thing, but you can still inform on both. That's also like good I point. remember. I remember like looking at the Argentinian newspapers at some point, and I don't remember if it was my father or a co-worker, somebody mentioned it. It's like, why do they always um, inform on the bad stuff, but barely anyone is talking about all the old, other old stuff that are going, that happening around the world. There are good stuff, like people have been you know, building schools or hospitals or uh, getting someone recovered from whatever situation they were in, or countries cooperating to, I don't know, move further in the um, scientific investigation, which yeah. actually tends to happen, like a lot of countries work together on this. Like it happened now with the coronavirus, a lot of countries helped each other so that... So it's a very interesting point to get really clear with the intention behind uh, the drama factor the media handles yeah that's why um, like of course it's to get attention and, and stuff like that but there are also like there's something coming to my mind that in, um, we are all kind of like equally responsible because in a relationship both parties uh, give consent the one who does and the one who allows and so when we put our, our attention to any like a certain kind of media uh, or, or like a certain way of feeding us information, mm -hmm. then we are agreeing to that. And so the, the I feel one of the, the good questions to, we can ask ourselves is, do we want to keep feeding this kind of communication when it comes to uh, events that are happening around the world? So here's the thing that, kind of stands out for me is that, that question around drama and sensationalism and the fact is the, the core of it is that the bad feeling sells the drama sells and we buy it we buy it when people are telling us to buy slumming products in between two tv shows we buy it when people are telling us that the West versus the East is a massive thing. We buy it where there's floods happening. We buy it where there's big presidential races happening. We buy the drama. We always buy the drama. The good feeling does not sell. The drama sells. And that is part of the, for me, that's part of the challenge here. Like, yes, we have access to all the information we, we need. And yes, some things may not have changed if there was no access to that information. But at the core of it, what sells? Because we are buying it. We're the consumer. It's, it's what you said, Deb. It's, it's a two-way relationship. Somebody can't sell you something if you're not buying it. And the bigger question would be, why do we buy trauma? But now as I listen to Granville and what Deborah was saying, I ask myself, why do I buy drama? And then I ask myself, why did I buy the book from Jeff and Chalia, Twin Flames, Finding Your Ultimate Lover? Because that's not drama. That's a love and peace. And how do I came to this place? that they make a new decision, that I'm, I don't give power anymore to drama, but to love and to mm -hmm. peace. And it was, I felt so much pain in my heart. And I desired um, a to solution. feel a solution, a true solution. I desired the truth. And that is when the consciousness desires truth 
and peace at the core, then we will not buy drama anymore. Yeah, I was going to say that, like, good media um, should be a thing, you know, because there's tons of stories out there that I've read that were, like, really happy or, like, divine and it, or, like, it made me cry because it was so nice, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, how, how do we get that, like, like, the feeling of peace into that? Because I feel like even if it's like some tragic story, like it could still be told in a divine way to like report it to, to us. I really love this word report today. I'm just like reporting, reporting. You know? <laughs> so yeah, like, you know, that cause obviously it's not like all bad. Um, you know, even when you look at the the bias report right they're all they're like scattered all over the place like all the media um stations they're all over the place so it's like there is divine reporting uh so we're just like expanding on the divine reporting by making new choices like uh paco was saying um so we're not being served the drama anymore. There must be a correlation with um, fake news where uh, no one Grendel said that uh, me, the media could not be selling something that we would not be buying means that a part of the uh, population is should choosing fake news and drama in a, in a way, a part of consciousness. Um, so it's feeding the fake news, not the other way around, like, and um, yeah, but it could be, uh, it's feeling separation, I think. It's even deeper than that. Because fake news can be on, um, you know, refusing to accept science. Like, for example, the, the earth is flat, the earth is round. Um, it could be on taking a political stance, as we see often in, in the US with. Um, media being like clearly Republican or clearly Democratic. And um, <clears throat> yeah, it could be on so much more. So yeah, there's this, um, this energy of separation. It's kind of feeding the cycle of deformation in, um, in, a, in a, I'd say a vicious cycle of, um, of wanting to take sides once again. Yeah. I realized now something when I was listening to you in last, the last days on weekend we, well, I was watching movies in the past I love to watch and they were with, with a lot of drama and action <laughs> I was not resonating anymore with them I was kind of why I asked myself why I'm why, why I was watching that and then I realized uh, how um why, I don't <laughs> why is there so much drama <laughs> yes. I said to her and now I realize also when I'm kind of in my in my job <clears throat> In the past, people always um, tell, told me things about people I didn't know and how dramatically their life was. And 
I didn't, under, I didn't understand what they are doing that and now this is not happening anymore or not in, in that um, big way of mm. it's I don't resonate anymore with it like Lorin said with uh, healing as we are responsible as the viewer too we do not uh, resonate anymore with um, information that is overall dramatic and not kind of just what we what is now necessary to give to us and we will resonate more to like Anastasia shared divine uh, information divine reporting and this come and so it's important also in such big topics like the purpose of uh, social media the news that we heal inside of us what is um upsetting us or makes us angry because it will have an impact all over the world. Well, that's a very interesting question. Like what is, the, like what is media uh, mirroring us? I was uh, upset sometimes with the Austrian, um, Austrian media because it felt like a kindergarten and oh. I was so upset with it really when they was talking about politician I thought what I'm not a kindergarten kid I'm an adult I would like to have mature information and I had to mirror that because it upset me so deeply because I was so mm -hmm. kind of I, I was so full of shame about the situation and I, I healed that inside of me and then um, information came to me where I was able to make myself a really um, like a decision. Also, we shared that I can make a decision inside of me. I, I got this information. Like uh, Anastasia said, this information is already there, but it's not that loud. There are already reporters who make or are still because it was always reporters who that was important for them. Like Rorin said, now they don't have time to um, get all the information anymore. They just have to give um, further what they receive. But there are still people who really have this divine calling in their heart to be um, divine reporters. And it's possible. Mm -hmm. What you're saying is so healing, Paco. Um, and um, it's true, it's about vibration and vibrating with the media that you consume. And I think it um, complements very well what Ray and Natalie are discussing in, in the chat about like truth being seen as not entertaining or like news being seen and peace being seen as, as boring, basically. And uh, what you're demonstrating is that uh, it's possible to heal and uh, and actually want to, you know, make the choice to have something more mature um, and more peaceful uh, in your re reality. So, yeah, I think what you shared is really good and and hopeful as well. I, th I think that's something that kind of came up for me through listening to Paco and Deb and now to Irina as well is, and also reading the comments. It's just like, the, for me, the, the core of it feels like there's a bigger call in consciousness for the truth. And this is why we're finding so many things being exposed for their non-truthfulness and i think i feel like it's our core choice even in exploring and opening this conversation up was to find the truth of unity at the core of everything the truth of the connectedness of everything and so there's a big shift for me. It feels like a big shift into just feeling the energy of that connection, the energy of the truth of that connection. And 
again, it's one of those pervasive things that kind of, it's almost an all pervasive thing that kind of spills over into every area of your life. You kind of like, if you're calling in the truth in one place or in one area of your life, it's going to spill over because it's a core choice. There's a core choice in desiring healthy media. There's a core choice in desiring truthful media. And so, yes, we still have a, probably a significant component of society that does believe the truth is boring and that does believe that peace is boring. But we also have a great component of society that's going, well, actually, I believe the drama is boring. And I believe the drama is draining. And I believe that the drama is an energy leak. And so I do, I do feel the shift, but it's also important to ask the questions. It's, it's important to try and get to what's sitting at the core there. You know, it, 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 we can't look at the surface. And that's been the, that's been the driving factor for this Seeking Harmony live discussion is to start delving into the core of things. Because as you walk towards the core, you illuminate things. You highlight things, you bring things into awareness. It gives the opportunity to bring healing into that space just through the awareness. It, it's literally the simple factor of you can't unknow something once you know it. We can't unknow that sometimes there's sensationalism in the news and we kind of have to be very clear about are we buying into the hype or are we buying into the facts? Are we looking for the truth here? I get the feeling that you wrapped it up perfectly. <laughs> the idea was not to wrap it up perfectly. The idea was just to plant a seed. But what I actually want us to just check in on is Yurin mentioned something that was quite interesting and probably very important to explore and that energy of overcompensation. And I don't know, Yurin, I like, just for me, like if you could maybe just go a little bit deeper there, like what are you feeling when you're saying that there's an energy of overcompensation in what's happening now in media as opposed to what used to happen in media? Um. Well, I think it's so emotional and spiritual, really. I think um, we, we've, um, how global we are, uh, again, I think it's very easy to feel overwhelmed compared to, to um, <clears throat> in the past because we actually see, oh, we are a whole world and uh, what I can do today can affect someone in China. And um, I think I've definitely felt that overwhelm and anxiety. And so I definitely feel that people would like their media to, um, to bring them more and more and more every day. And there is this feeling of um, always having to catch up <clears throat> with what is happening uh, in the world. Like when, when I was uh, studying social sciences, there was definitely, there's an, this energy of like, you better check like, the, media, the media from all sides every day 
um, every morning and every night. And um, I remember like actually doing that and reading books and trying to always catch up with the information of the world was a full-time job. And most of us dropped that out by the middle of semester because this is not actually how, this is not humanly possible to do. And, um, or you, you live in a place of, of not being out and overworking, which is a story for another day, but I do feel that, um, I do still feel sometimes that there's this energy of like, there's so much going on in the world, like how am I going to know everything that's happening? And so I, I know my parents are, have demonstrated that. And so when they go back from work, um, the 24 seven news TV channel needs to be on because like, oh my gosh, what did I miss in the day? What did I miss? Like, how do I catch up to everything that's happened? How do I um, assimilate the most information because, before I go to bed? And so there's like several TV news channel being consumed and then the 24 hours news channel being consumed. So yeah, I feel, yeah. That's how I would explain this energy. And um, yeah, how do you guys feel about that? Um, is this something that resonates in your reality as well? Or I definitely had that moment of somebody mentioning something and like, did, did you, you didn't hear it on the news? No, I barely pay attention to the news because at some point it's kind of like, it, it starts to burn my, my brain out. And yeah, like, again, in a context where news are being pretty much flashed at you at every second at every corner, whether you turn on the TV or not, uh, like I set a very strong boundary in, in what information am I receiving? Because I don't need to be bombarded with the same thing from five different channels and 10 different newspapers. And then the people at the office repeating like parrots over and over the same thing. It's like, no. So... No, I just didn't hear it, but I, I can definitely find this energy that Yuri was pointing like um, of overcompensating or like feeling that I cannot be the one who doesn't know what happened. And no, if it's your peace of mind, you can be totally okay with not knowing. Like you will find out anyway, in some way or another. Maybe it's more compassionate when you hear it on an elevator talking about the weather with the neighbor from downstairs. Uh, than actually like being there constantly bombarded with the same information over and over again. So like in, in, even in this case, like again, we can make the choice of how we want to receive information too, regardless of whether it's bias or not, or like where is it coming from? Uh, it's still information coming our way and we still can choose what to do with it. Like, um, I, for instance, the, I, I went through several periods of time where I would not read a single newspaper. I will not see a single news uh, TV pro, I will call it TV show because that's also, we can like dive more into detail and how that functions and um, how messy it is. Um, but because it's, it was the healthiest thing to do. Otherwise, like, again, if you are being fed the same information, especially if it's the drama information that we were speaking about, um, at some point it will drag you down. And I was like, I have more important things to do with my life than like be gloomy about the same thing. It's like, okay, can we find a solution to this then? If it's such a big problem, let's find a solution then. So, but that was my experience in regards to media in general. <laughs> yeah, I think I also went through a stage where I was like, I'm not listening to the scrap, but I want to know about it. I already hear about it. And, you know, it would be like, it would be the most bizarre thing because as you said, that you, you'd hear it from all sorts of people. 
and you're like for my, my 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 reaction was always like really and you know because in the in, you know, like it's just that that energy of the in the grander scheme of things you know nine good things happen and one bad thing happens but you hear nine reports about the one bad thing and one report about the nine good things and it was just never balanced and i just i lost interest and it, it was that energy and maybe it was numbing out but it also was the energy of i refuse to be dragged down by this because of the fact that there was so much negative reporting and I like the I like that Anastasia took us into the space of divine reporting. Because if you think about it, what is a report? A report is an account of what has happened, not sensationalized in any way. It's just an account. And now we have all sorts of weird and wonderful artistic flair applied to things that it shouldn't be applied to. Like we get it, we live in a very diverse world. We live in a world where people are gonna take up a pink brush instead of a red brush to paint something, we get it. I feel like potentially our news shouldn't be that. I feel like potentially our global news shouldn't be like that. But also that at some point you kind of, you know, I just, I found that it turned the world into a very uncomfortable place, a very, Fear, almost a fear factor place. And it's something that, uh, that Sarah has also just shared, you know, in terms of listening to all the commentary that it did turn the world into a dangerous place to be. And if the world is being turned into a dangerous place to be, how many of us are, then have the desire to actually choose life? How many of us have the desire to choose love? when fear factor basically scratches at us everywhere we go. So partially, I want to know, and maybe it's a question of a hypothetical question, that does this stuff fuel significant amounts of fear to keep people stuck in a certain loop? that they think they can't get out of. That's a question, hypothetical. We don't have to answer it today. Think about it. What purpose does this stuff serve? So I want to leave you with that question. And yeah, just check in with the team. How are you feeling? Does that feel like a good place to wrap this up? Good. So thank you everybody for today's conversation and thank you to the team that has been commenting and sharing with us in the comments section of our live discussion. We'd also like to invite everybody to please like and subscribe to our Church of Union YouTube channel where you will find all our live discussions that have happened in the Unionism Spiritual Discussion Group on Facebook and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye.